This week at Interior. In Atlanta, Georgia this week, President Trump announced that his administration is reclaiming America's legacy as a nation of builders with a complete overhaul of the approval process for new infrastructure projects. The regulations for the National Environmental Policy Act were comprehensively updated and modernized for the first time in more than 40 years. Reviews were taking the government on average four and a half years to complete and were hundreds to thousands of pages in length. Secretary Bernhardt says this may be the most consequential change in administrative environmental practice in 50 years and will be a massive boon for the American people. Secretary Bernhardt joined Second Lady Karen Pence at Shenandoah National Park this week to highlight the many benefits of the outdoors for Americans' mental and physical health and the important work of National Park Service employees who are keeping these places accessible to visitors. At the park, Mrs. Pence and the Secretary met with park employees and the park's current artist-in-residence to observe a local artist teaching a small group of students as part of a park volunteer program. Assistant Secretary of Water and Science Dr. Timothy Petty was in Montana this week to tour reclamation and USGS sites. During the trip, Dr. Petty highlighted the importance of investing in rebuilding and modernizing rural infrastructure and the collaborative efforts taking place with local, state, and federal partners. Fish and Wildlife Director Aurelia Skipwith visited the Great Dismal Swamp National Wildlife Refuge as more of the nation's public lands continue to reopen. The refuge is located in Interior's northern Appalachian region and as part of the Underground Railroad to Freedom once provided refuge to thousands of people fleeing north to escape slavery. The National Park Service and National Park Foundation invite everyone to join in the celebration for Latino Conservation Week, July 18th through the 26th. The week provides in-person and virtual opportunities to engage with public lands associated with Latino culture and history. You can follow events, share your own experiences, and get inspired on social media during Latino Conservation Week using hashtag FindYourPark, hashtag Latino Conservation Week, and hashtag LCW2020. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the USGS Bird Banding Laboratory. The lab, now based at the USGS Patuxent Wildlife Research Center in Laurel, Maryland, was established in 1920 to study and help protect North American birds. The USGS Laboratory issues permits for banding in the U.S. and is a central repository for banding records in the U.S. and Canada. And our social media pictures of the week, stunning views of the comet Neowise lighting up the skies from coast to coast over America's public lands. The comet is named for the NASA telescope that first spotted it in March. Neowise made its closest approach to the sun on July 3rd and is now headed back out into the outer solar system with its closest approach to Earth coming on July 23rd. If you haven't caught a glimpse of Neowise yet, here's good news. The best time for everyone to see it will be over the next few weeks or so. Hovering over the north-northwest horizon in the late evening and over the north-northeast horizon in the early morning. Won't be back for another visit for nearly 7,000 years. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. That's This Week at Interior.